great welcome to this stream. We're going to talk about creating um, virtual spaces for education. We're going to do it like this um, because this week we're going to tell a lot about um, uh, actually showing a lot about um, making spaces and creating content. Um, so I'm going to talk a lot, I'm sorry, but I also try to show you a lot of things. Um, if you have any questions, just drop them into the chat and I will uh, I regularly watch at the chat and then I can answer them uh, when, it, um, when it fits into the schedule. Um, so uh, first of all, um, what are we going to talk about? Um, with um, Imedu, which is a platform for virtual education, it is easy to create uh, uh, virtual spaces for learning. Um, but how do you do that? Because normally you can create a space or something where you can go inside with a, a few students. But how do you make it interactive and how do you add quizzes and other content? So to show you that, I'm going to first uh, walk into a virtual space that we have. So everybody has the same idea about what we're going to do. And then we're going to build a few spaces. And I will show you how that works. Um, all right, so this is basically Imedu and I'm going to quickly look for a demo space. I'll explain this later. And currently it's opening. And this is just basically a demonstration space. And I don't know if you were here the last time, uh, if you uh, were in the previous uh, seminar or webinar, you've seen this space yourself. But I'm going to quickly use this to get um, a quick impression for everybody. Just one or two minutes, and then we're going to go into building ourselves. So if you enter a space, there's always some instructions um, uh, uh, and some uh, other things, which I will talk to, later, talk to you later about. Um, first of all, this is basically a, a virtual space where I can walk around. I can use my mouse and my keyboard to move around. And if you look at me, this is basically me at the moment. I have an avatar which uh, sort of looks like myself. And uh, with this avatar, I can uh, uh, move around and I can actually explore explore the space. So let's do that. Now, the first space I'm going to walk through is, is a space that we've built for a virtual field trip, as we call it. So this is actually a learning space where students can walk with an avatar uh, through an environment where there are posters or there are 3D models or there are other things that help them to learn about a specific topic. Now, as you can see, there's a poster here with uh, some information. I can also open it. And if I click on the link, uh, it will open a page. In this case, it's a Wikipedia page for the example, but which, which tells a bit more about, uh, in this case, a Mars rover that is uh, that we're talking about. Now we can, of course, see three D models of specific mod, um, rovers. This is a very simple one, but you can also add more complicated ones. And um, here's another panel. And another way to add information is with uh, your own articles and even with videos, as you can see. So you can also include YouTube videos about a specific topic that students then can uh, watch themselves. So this is basically one very quickly one way of learning in a virtual space. Huh? So visiting a space, uh, opening information and, uh, and watching quizzes, uh, doing quizzes and, uh, uh, and learning in that way. Another way is more playful way is this nature value that we have here. And as you can see, there's a fence here with a treasure. And we want, of course, want to know what's in the treasure chest. Um, and if we open it, we see that there's a quiz. So we can start the quiz and we get all kinds of complicated questions. So we can guess them, but of course the idea is that you walk around this space and that you find the specific information that um, you as a student can, uh, can learn about and then use that to open uh, the gate. So that's more like a treasure hunt or an escape room. Then, Another example I want to show is um, an example where you cooperate with different students in the space. So for example, this is a space where you can pick up some buildings uh, and you can build a whole city. Um, and there's also a neat trick to make yourself pretty small and then walk through your the city that you've built. So this doesn't maybe doesn't make much sense to build a city and walk through, but if you link this to an assignment uh, along with, for example, a whiteboard here where people can use a pen tool and draw on it um, uh, yeah and open documents and other tools uh, you could create a sort of collaborative environment where students can work together on a specific topic 
I know this is going pretty fast, but it's just to, to set your mind about what is possible. And then finally, here's a space where you, you see a 3D model of a heart in this case. Um, and uh, this is a very nice way to use 3D models to have a better detailed overview of, of in this case, uh, a part of the human body, but of course can be anything that you would like to, uh, to show. And I will also show you how you can find these models and use them. And of course you can also start videos. So that's pretty quickly um, the ID about what we're going to uh, going to show. Um, let me see if I can add the presentation I wanted to show you. Um, and this is, yeah, okay. This is the, um, the setup for the, for the hour or 50 minutes we have. So a short introduction, um, then a live demo of how to build some spaces. And at the end, uh, I think it's pretty cool if we then all get a link and we can use our laptop or our, even our mobile phone to go into the space that, um, that we just created in this uh, 45 minutes. So that's the agenda. If you have a question, please uh, use the comments, as I said. Um, if you go into the space at the end of the uh the webinar uh, i advise you to use an audio headset or a mouse and we'll also record of course this um this webinar and we will uh, send the link to all the participants afterwards so you can review every detail that you've missed or want to see again all right so let's start um what is a virtual space we talked about this last time i just want to repeat it very quickly a space is not just a 3d world as you already saw there's learning content there there are science there students need to have instructions what they need to do so it's a whole combination of different things and that's what we're also going to build if you build a virtual space there are several steps that you normally would take so like everything you design at a high level you start with planning and design in this case you start building and setting up a virtual world and you configure and add your learning content uh, finally you're going to test and improve everything now we're going to specifically talk about number two and three here. Very quickly about the planning, and but I think it's good to sign up for future uh, webinars if you want to know more about this. Uh, October 13th, for example, we're going to talk about instructional design uh, with a guest, Craig Freilich. Um, and in November, we're going to organize a longer webinar on this specific topic. But as you can see, as this is actually a, a planning sheet we use for our own spaces. Uh, it doesn't start with 3D models. It starts with learning goals description, what do we want to achieve with the space? What do students need to learn? And then we build sort of a table, like what are the areas that we want to uh, build or use in our space? But that's for next time. For today, I basically want to build this. So I want to build an entry space where, where students can, can come into the learning environment. And then I want to add three specific learning experiences. And Normally we would probably build separate spaces for those three things, but because I want to build a, um, a connected world this time where we all can walk through the diff three different spaces, I'm going to show you how that works. So they will all be connected and students can uh, jump between the different worlds. Okay, let's start with the art gallery. So first of all, um, in the menu, you have your own collection of spaces. And um, if you want to add a new space, you click on the top right. And then I need to, of course, open my uh, desktop, otherwise you can't see anything. So I'm going to go back uh, one step. So I'm in the spaces overview. I'm going to click on add a new space. Now here we're going to ask you what your space is about. So now I'm going to tell this is about a demonstration, um, uh, creating spaces and webinar. Now I can add some learning goals. Uh, okay, we want to show how you can build uh, a learning space. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you a lot of things, but let's keep it like this. But I think you understand what, what the purpose is of this field. And there's a description. This is actually something that you can use for yourself. Yeah, so this is for a webinar of uh, September 22. So that's just something for me. 
if this space is later in my collection, I know what it is and I can find it uh, back. Uh, another thing is if you have colleagues and you want to share this space afterwards, it's also important because it describes uh, to your colleagues what this is about and it helps them to, to decide if they want to use it or to copy it from you. Okay, so now I said the basics and now we help you to select the right template. Um, in Imedu, we provide uh, uh, different standard templates of worlds or spaces um, to get you going. So you just can start with a specific world and you only have to add some learning content with it. Now, not every space is of course the same. Uh, if you have a big stage, that's very good for presenting something or giving instruction, but it's less suitable for maybe making an escape room. So that's why we have this um, different categories. And for now I'm going to go with the field trip and I get some suggested locations that I can use. And no, I'm not going for the field trip. So I'm going to all locations. I'm actually looking for, yeah, for the lounge. That's what I was looking for. So I select this page and now it's, it's going to create the space, space sorry, in the backend. Uh, it's ready, so that's nice. I look it up and here it is in my list with the title that I gave. Now I can enter it and then I go into the 3D world. But first I want to show you something else. I'm going to go into the details of this space. So here's the title again, description, all kinds of methods. I can set a language, all kinds of settings. I will leave this for now. But more important is the lesson plan, because this is actually also what your students will see when they start using the space. And especially the student instructions are very important because that will tell them what they need to do. So we can type in here, welcome to this demonstration. You can explore the different spaces uh, on your own and discover some possibilities of virtual education. Now there are some tools to add some mar markup or links, but I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, learning goals, we already added that. We can also add some preparation. So if you want to make sure that students do some things um, uh, in advance, we can add it here. Um, tasks, another thing we're going to add so like I said, we had uh, four different spaces. So I'm going to just to add four different tasks. So we're going to meet in the lounge. Then we're going to visit the art gallery. Um, then we're going to uh, 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 learn, learn uh, in the science lab. And there's an uh, escape or treasure hunt on the islands. To be honest, I hope we get to the end of it, but um, because um, I see the time is already getting a bit faster than I, uh, uh, moving a bit faster than I was anticipating, but let's see. Um, so these are my tasks. So the task for students to do in the space. Now, teacher instructions is something that you can tell other teachers so if you're building a space with a specific instruction or a specific um, uh, learning method, um, you can write it down here, either for yourself, if you want to do it later, or for a colleague that just wants to use this space and yeah, you give them instructions how to use it basically. Now then here are my locations and I'm first going to start with the entry, uh, entry hall. Now there's only one location now. And as you've seen, we're going to add more, but I'll do that later. So I'm just going to start with one. Now, now it's going to store my changes and also make the changes to the virtual world. All right. And then I'm going to enter it. Now at this moment, by the way, this space is just for me. So nobody, nobody, Nobody else can, can enter it. There's no public URL yet. Uh, students don't know about it. It's just for me to set up. So I'm going to enter the room. And now I can uh, walk around and, uh, and think about how I'm going to set up my space. Um, so what are we going to do here? So we're going to need some, um, some links to other, other spaces. So I think that we'll put them over here. So that's where you can add to other locations. 
Um, but first I want to show you some basic things because now you want to add content to this space. So let's say um, we are here and we want to add some, uh, some things to the wall. Maybe some, um, maybe some art uh, because we want to talk about it. There's a place button at the bottom. And with this place button, you can put all kinds of content into the space. You can see it says an image, a link, a 3D model, a video, PDF, or a sound. So these are just files you can uh, uh, upload from your hard disk. Um, and for example, if I want to open an image, I can choose a file. And then it will, uh, it will actually open a browser. And here I have prepared some, uh, some images in this case. So I can select it, um, create an object, and here's my image. I pick it up with my mouse and I can actually move it inside one of these frames. You can see all, all these blue frames at the walls. Uh, this is what we call media frames. And media frames are basically placeholders. So you don't have to like manually put it in the right space. You can just either move it in like this and you see it snaps to the right size. If you just press the space bar, you can pin it. That means it will stay there even if I log out or leave the room. In this case, very important. Um, and if you want to take it out, you unpin it. So I pick it up and here it is. Now, this is not, not that hard, but if you want to move a lot of content or other stuff in the space, um, it's easier to do it like this. So you right click on the object and you get the details and you see a function called pin two. And pin two is basically a shortcut. It helps you to select a certain um, uh, media frame and you can recognize them by the, the name. So wall left one. And if you click it, it automatically goes there and it uh, is also pinned as you can see. So this is a very easy way to quickly set up different content uh, into the space. Um, then I'm going to uh, prepare something while I'm talking. Um, now we want to uh, uh, have a nice, maybe a nice, say, let's say, um, overview of the learning space on our on our big screen here. Yeah, so students are going to come in here and need to know where they need to go. So if we're going to put some doors here behind the wall to other spaces, we want to show them where they need to go. Um, so I'm going to make that door, and I'm going to do that um, uh, very simple in uh, uh, sheet, Google Sheets program. So basically you can make all kinds of content um, in every program. And um, because you can save everything as an image or you can use a screen grab, um, it's a very easy way to, uh, for example, create a poster. So I'm just opening uh, a new slide here at the side. Here it is. And let's see if I can, yeah, put it on the screen. So now I want to make a um, map for people to visit the space. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to uh, add a text. I can say, welcome students. And I'm going to uh, make a few, uh, like a very quick high level map. Um, so we were going to make uh, the art gallery. And we're going to make uh, the science lab. And there will be an island. Now, of course, if you spend a bit more time here, then you can make this as nice as you want. Uh, but for now, I just want to show you the basics. So I'm going to say the art gallery uh, is this way. The science lab is this way. And the island is the other way to the right. Let's make it a bit more compact. Now, a very easy way to make a poster is use your screen. Um, uh, screen capture software. Uh, so with every with uh, with your Windows machine or your Mac machine, you always have a key combination where you can make a print screen, and it's basically a very easy way to make a picture and save it in your hard disk. Of course, of course, we can also in all these kinds of projects we can save a slide as a picture, 
but I just use the, the print screen option because it's so much easier. Okay, I made a print screen and now I'm going to show this, add this to the room. So clicking on place, clicking on image, I'm going to choose a file, but I want to show you something else. Um, it's very convenient um, if you have uh, a browser because uh, on your computer, uh, an explorer or something else, um, that you can just drag in um, your content. So basically you can uh, always pick up a file from anywhere, your desktop or anywhere else, and just drag it into the, into the space. I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to just go to the uh, location where I found my screenshot. I'm going to drag it into the space and I'm not sure if you see this, but yeah. So if I pick it up and drag it, I will get um, a dialogue here that asks me how I want to uh, show this. Okay, so great. And here's my poster. Now I'm going to right click, put it on the center stage. And here you go. Now I have like a very rudimentary <laughs> simple map for the students to enter my space. Okay. Um, Nice, so we have our entry hall, very basic, and I'm, I'm going to quickly go to the next space. Um, of course, there are all kinds of different tools. You can add PDFs, sounds, videos, but we'll uh, partly come to that. And if you want to, uh, let's say, um, welcome your students, there's also ways to share your webcam or share your screen. Um, I can try to share my webcam, I hope it works. Because I'm already streaming, of course. Yeah, so you can see it, Ah, you can see my green screen. Um, but that's a way to uh, actually um, yeah, show yourself into the space, give a presentation if you want to have a human face and not your, uh, your avatar face. Okay, so everything is pinned as you can see, so I can safely leave the room. And um, I'm clicking on this button here. And now I'm back and I'm going to add some more locations to my space. So clicking on the edit button here. And now we want to add an art gallery. So if we add a location, there's all kinds of locations um, that you can uh, create yourself. And that's a different story if you have designed so far, but we're now going to the default locations. And these are locations that we as you may do by default add to your system that you can always use as, you, as much as you want. Um, so we're starting with the ad gallery. So I'm going to click add this location. And now you see there are two locations in the space. So where do students start? How does it work? Now, that's what the entry point is for. So that means if you share a link to the space with a student, it will always um, uh, they will always start in the entry point. And from there, they can move further to the art gallery in this case, um, uh, or any other location. Okay, that's all I want to do for now. So I'm going to save. Quickly looking at uh, if there's a chat message, I see there's one comment. Okay, I think something is not visible. Okay, I'll see if I can uh, quickly um, change the size of the screen that people can see the buttons better. Thanks for the tip. Um, all right, so I added the location to my space. I'm going to enter it and you can see what has changed. Now we didn't change the entry point, so we're still coming in uh, in this uh, location. But if I open the guide, and the guide is basically a tool for students or for yourself to, um, to help you use the space, um, you will see, for example, the instructions that I typed in. Uh, so students will see what they need to do. You will see the tasks that I filled in but also the navigator. And you can see in the navigator, we now have two locations and we can easily jump to the art gallery. So let's do that. All right, so here we are, our empty art gallery. It's a nice space, but there's not so much to do. Um, now this space, as you can see, every, every let's say area where you can place um, uh, an image has a number. That's of course done uh, uh, for, for the reason that it's very easy to um, 
add some things. And there's also some pedestals here. And as I will show, you can also add 3D models here. But let's start with the beginning. So you might want to add some instructions here to the wall, for example. I'm not going to do that now, but as a similar way that I showed you before by using either uh, uh, a presentation tool or even Google Docs, you can quickly make a poster, uh, make a screenshot and put it on the wall with some extra instructions. It's always good to help students to, um, uh, to find out where they are. Uh, and this is actually a very good way that you start here in sort of a side room. So uh, there's kind of an overview of what's going to come. And that's actually much better if you would start right in the center. Uh, if you would let students, if students would come in here, it's like, oh, where am I? What's the starting point? What's the first uh, picture maybe I need to watch? So it's always good to, and, and with our standard rooms, we try to do that, uh, that you start in a corner and it's very clear what you need to do and where you need to go. Um, so let's fill in this uh, this art gallery. And I um, collected some uh, pictures of trees because I like that. And let's see if I can um, quickly find them. Yeah, so I'm going to drag them one by one into the space. And this is going to go to uh, a two. This is another one. It's going to go to a one. Um, then we have one here. All these images coming from uh, from a site called Unsplash. Um, I have some links I will add it to the description of the recording later, where we where you can find these pictures. Also with the um, uh, with the attribution to the to the creators of these images. Um, so you can find it there. And these are actually all nice trees that I'm going to put in this gallery. Now, I think you get the idea, so I'm not going to fill the whole thing, but as you can see, I'm, it like, took me 10 seconds to, 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 to add these five um, uh, trees, and I think I can do it in, uh, in, in, in one or two minutes, I can fill the whole room. Um, so that's actually a very quick way to set up a gallery. Now, this pedestal here, what are we going to do with that? Um, actually, let's try to put a 3D model there. Now, as you can see, I'm clicking on, uh, on Place 3D Model and there's an integration with a library called Sketchfab. Um, that's like an, uh, a library where people can publish 3D models um, with different kind of uh, licenses and sources. You, I will show you later how to check that. But for now, um, let's look for a tree. And let's see if somebody made something nice. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah. Okay. And as you can see, there's also a media frame, but this time it's a cube. So that means it's a 3D media frame. And here we are. Actually, actually I have my three. Now, this is actually nice. So people can walk, uh, walk through the space. You can use the guide again. Yeah, to give instructions, maybe like they need to talk about, uh, they need to maybe match uh, a specific list of tree names with the pictures on the wall, or you can uh, ask them to select their favorite and uh, or make a drawing picture, um, anything uh, from it. Um, or you can just walk with your students and discuss. Um, now, if it's art, probably not not these pictures, but if, if you're showing artworks, you can discuss about art. Um, you can use uh, images to start discussions about historic events or uh, have a gallery of world leaders. So a lot of things you can do uh, with students to um, to use an art gallery. And it's pretty simple. You just need pictures or, or documents or other stuff that you can show and uh, maybe uh, even show a 3D model to make it um, make it more interactive, or more interactive, more, uh, more visual. Um, yeah. One thing I want to show, sometimes you just want to make a sign in wall or place a note somewhere. So um, there's a function for that. Um, if you click on the chat button at the bottom and um, yeah, you can actually type a text that you want to see. So you, let's say this is the oldest tree in the world. And instead of pressing the send button to to basically send a chat message to everybody in the room. 
you click on the magic wand. It's a different button, it's completely at the right. And if you click this one, you see the system generates a small, let's say, label that you can move around. And you can actually, um, I wanted to put it, this looks more like the old screen in the world. Yeah, and we can actually place it here. Yeah, and so it's very easy to add a small note or something else uh, next, to, uh, next to a tree in this case. Okay, it's already five past eight, so I'm going to go to the next one. Um, let me see if everything is uh, is pinned. I need to pin this one. These one are already pinned, and also this one. Okay, so my let's say my my small art gallery is gone is done for this moment, and let's uh, move on to the next stage and let's go to the science lab. All right. In the same way, I'm going to add another location. Look at locations. And it's somewhere. Ah, here it is. And I'm going to call this Science Lab. Note, by the way, that I can also change the entry point. So if I want to have the students um, uh, start in the, in the art gallery, I can just click this one and this will be the entry point. Um, um, I can even, if I want to have two art galleries, uh, including the images and the posters that I just entered them, I can click on clone and then I will get a copy into the same space with the same pictures and the same models that I already entered there. Okay, going to save the changes again. And I'm going to enter it. Now for the science lab, I want to add a bit more uh, sort of different um, types of content. So we also um, can see that. And I'm going to use a navigator and here it is. Go to jump to the science lab. So this is our science lab. And let's say, because this is a nice open space here, we have some workbenches where we can uh, add some, uh, maybe some things to read or to uh, to discuss. And this is a very nice area where you can actually show uh, 3D models, big 3D models. I'm using a model for this example from a very nice site. This is actually uh, the Smithsonian. It's a, uh, it's a museum. And they actually supplying a lot of very nice 3D scans or models of things in their, uh, in their museum. You can use it for free under a Creative Commons license. So, um, and it's actually very great. And I found um, one model there, which I'm now going to drag into the room. And that was uh, a mammoth skeleton. So here it is. And similar as an image or a PDF or something else, you can see I can just drag the file into the space and I can also uh, enlarge it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to make it really big because I have the room for it. Oh, make sure. So maybe move it around a bit like this. And I'm going to move upstairs because I can see I want to make it so big that you can really like see it from up here. Just because we can. All right. And so you can see it's a very nice way to to have a completely different view on 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 small things, yeah? Because that now this is a mammoth skeleton, but it can also be a, a heart or a mark or a molecule or maybe a, um, a human cell. It, you can all kinds of 3D models that you can find. It's, it's a very great way to very simply just scale it and put it into a space. Uh, before I forget, let's spin it. And um, I'm going to jump down. Yeah, so here we have our member, quite impressive. And let's put something else in the space. Um, what else do we have? I think I also got... Um,
another model. Yeah, this was. Oh. This is actually um, a remnant of a whale. So I'm going to put that here on the table. That's actually coming from the same side. So I'll put this that here. And so that's also something that students can then investigate um, and talk about. You can uh, add assignments next to it, of course. Um, yeah, and let's see if we can also add something else uh, besides models. I have prepared some other stuff. Let me see. Um, yeah, let's add a video. And before we do that, I want to tell quickly tell you a bit more about the content library. Up till now, when I was placing content, I was always using the place button and I was getting a file from my hard drive, uh, either a document or an image, or in this case, model. Uh, we also see that we, uh, we've seen that we can actually um, use a 3D model browser yeah, from Sketchfab to add models. But there's another way and that's the content library. And the content library is basically an integration with, um, with our backend. And it helps you to uh, reuse articles or links together with your colleagues um, and place them into the space as sort of a, uh, a pop-up window. So for example, uh, I'm going to show you first uh, example. This is a video. It's about vegetables you should grow. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure where that comes from. I think from another demo. Yeah, and here you can see I can um, place it into the web. Uh, in the virtual space, it takes a while to load. And here you can see it creates automatically creates a poster with a title. And if you click on it, it will open up a pop-up, in this case with a video that I can play. And the, the thing is that I'm the only person, and me as an avatar, um, this, uh, this guy here, he's the only one that's seeing that pop-up. So it's also a very great way to uh, let students uh, work in the same room but each of them can view their own video, for example. And so if, if I want to watch the video that's here on the right, then I can do that, but other students don't have to listen to it. They can do it on their own time. Um, other things in the content library, so you can find articles and uh, sites, uh, quizzes, and also the locations that we have in our space. And if I drag a location in the space, it will also add a link, but then it will be a link to that room, uh, to that location. So instead of the um, navigator, if I click on this, I will transport to the art gallery. So that's actually an easy way to make doors because I can put it somewhere on the wall, um, for example here, and then I know if I click on it, uh, I'll put it <laughs> the wrong way around, but if I click on it, then I will have a, let's say, sort of a door or portal to the other space. Uh, of course, it's great to drag in all these documents uh, from the content library, but how do you create it? Because I didn't explain that yet. Therefore, I'm going back to the backend. And here you can see the content library. And here are all the documents that I actually uh, created and that we can see in the sidebar. So you can simply add a document and then it asks you if you want to write an article or just a link to an external website. In this case, I want to write an article and I can say, uh, write something about the woolly mammoth. Um, and this is my text. I can um, use headings, I can use uh, small text, I can um, yeah, have all kinds of simple uh, markup tools, and there's also a way to end in a tool to insert images into your um, into your uh, article. If you now want to add a video into it, you will simply get the embed code uh, from YouTube or another framework. You can always uh, get an embed code to embed a video, and I already did that for a video. So you click on this uh, button here to embed, uh, in this case, a video player. You add the code and you save your changes. Um, this video is actually not about the woolly mammoth, I remember. So this is actually a video about human origins. So where do we come from? So I'm going to change the title. And now I created the article in my content library. It's not here yet, as you can see. That's why I need to refresh it. So I open it and I close it or close and open it. And here it is. So now I can drag this into the space. 
Now something interesting. Um, as you can see, there are some other options here. Uh, previously, um, uh, this one here on the right, um, I didn't choose anything. And as you can see, it creates some sort of a uh, poster or sticker uh, with the title of the video or the article. But sometimes you want to show differently. Maybe you have an image that you want to show or you want to have a, some sort of text or a photo which people need to click on. So you can actually change how this pop-up window is represented in the space by using the options below. So we have some uh, default images here, but you can also upload your own picture. In this case, I'm going to uh, use the uh, bulb, light bulb, and I'm going to change the text on the button. I'm going to say, um, show me. So we're placing the link and now, uh, as you can see, we've got this uh, light bulb button. And if you click on it, you will get my new article with the video that I can watch in my own time. And again, uh, you can already see there are all these blue markings on the wall. So I will put this here on this side. I will pin it. And then uh, it's an easy way to add a video or some other information. Now, with all these tables, you can of course think about, okay, maybe there are for every there are three topics or two topics. So you use a table for every topic. You can even add more models or skulls or bones on the tables, uh, add assignments. Um, and so that's a very easy way to, to build up your whole space. Um, another thing I actually want to show you is, and that's, like, that's very nice about this space, there's sort of a back room here. And that has a purpose because if students are working in the space, in the, on the tables, on assignments, and then they watch the 3D model here, um, you always want to close off your class, maybe with, an evaluation or a small discussion. And this could be a very nice room and sort of natural place that if you're done, you move over here and you discuss uh, how things were going. Now, to make that clear, I can again, create a small label using the chat button and the magic toolbar. And let's, ah, there's already, uh, oh, wait a minute. That's um, my mistake, sorry, in the preparation, I put it in the wrong way, uh, but it's, here's the exit room. And um, now, what? how can you now ask your students how they liked um, this course? Eh? Because maybe it's the first time they did it or you want to improve it, so you need feedback. Now, you can discuss with each other, with avatars in this space. Of course, it's a very good way, but maybe you're not here. Maybe they're do doing this to exercise on their own and you still want to um, get some feedback. A very nice way is to use a feedback form. And it can be all kinds of things. It can be a simple Google document, uh, like um, uh, I just, um, uh, like I, I can show, but in this case, I made a Google form, but I know that for Microsoft and Office, there's also a way to make forms. There are different kinds of tools to have like small summaries or small, oh, sorry, so small surveys uh, that you can set up and people can, uh, can answer them. So. I made this one in Google Docs. I'm going to copy uh, the link and just showing you again what, what you can do with this flexible idea of placing links and images into the space. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to add a question mark, uh, pasting the link from the form and I'm going to say your feedback on the button. Here it is and I will place this here. And if I now click on it, it will open the feedback form and I can tell how I liked the uh, class. I can add some recommendations and other questions that, uh, that I would like to add. So it's a very neat way to like reuse existing websites or tools in your space um, and just link to it. Okay, so it's uh, 10, uh, 10 to uh, 10 minutes left for the session. I see a question from Kenny, uh, how to sw quickly switch first to third person view. Uh, there is no third person view, to be honest. Uh, there's a way to, to see your own avatar. That's with the, the button I on your keyboard yeah, from, from me. So you can just see how you look. Uh, that's especially useful if you want to change, for example, your avatar. 
Um, so there's a button over here to select another avatar. Um, you can make one even with Red Play Me, or you can um, select a standard one. Um, but uh, yeah, there's no, if you were looking for a view where you can see yourself from the back, if, you, if that's what you mean, that's currently not in the, in the system. Okay, um, let's see if there's anything else. Just quickly look at my uh, notes if I went through the most important stuff. Um, yeah, I wanted to set up the islands, uh, but considering the time, I think I just do it in this space. Um, what I wanted to show you is how you can actually make an escape room. So let's say there's a, there's a door here and we want to uh, have a quiz for students. And if they answer the quiz correctly, they will um, get access to, uh, let's say, a final room where there's something to celebrate or um, maybe next stage just in the learning uh, experience. Um, so let's first set up the puzzle. Um, I was thinking about very quickly just adding a few animals. Let's say the snail. Here it is. Oh, I accidentally did two. Uh, put it on the table, that would be nice. And uh, what can we do? Maybe a bat. There's one here. Ah, it's, it's even moving. Mm, maybe this is not such a good one. I'm going to remove this one. Um, this is actually also something that I show you now quickly. Um, if you press the object button, you will see all the objects in the room. So you can just hover over it and you can see directly uh, where they are. Uh, this is a very easy way to find things, especially if you have more objects in your room, then you can quickly uh, yeah, uh, navigate to something. You don't have to walk to it. Um, I was building animals. So maybe another bed, someone that's not moving. Here it is. So that's going to be there. And a final one, maybe a cat. This is, a, I know this one, this is moving, but this is quite okay. It's going to be on the floor, maybe a bit bigger. So pretty neat. Um, then quickly, um, no, I was planning to go there. I'm going to add uh, three letters. I'm just like making up a small puzzle here. Um, you can do it any way you want, of course. So this is A. Um, B, and C. Normally, I think you would probably move these um, different objects a bit. You spread them more out over the space, but this is basically the, the idea. So now I have my, my basic puzzle here, and I'm going to make a quiz in the back end. And I click on Add Quiz and uh, in the content section and i'm going to call it the animal quiz um and the question is do you know uh say put the animals in the right order from small to big or to large and we use the letters uh, for that uh description only for internal use i'm not going to use it and then we have one question for this quiz. Uh, so what is the correct order? Now, uh, A, B, C, B, C, A, and uh, C, B, A, or C, A, B. I think that's actually enough options. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, what it should be. Uh, C, B, A looks like the right answer to me. So I'm going to mark it here. And as you can see, um, you can turn the switches for the answer that's correct. Uh, you also have the option to have multiple correct answers if you have a different type of quiz. But in this case, there's only one uh, correct answer. Um, one other thing for every, if you make, make a quiz like this one, for every answer, you can also add an explanation. So you can say uh, why it is wrong. 
Yeah, so that, that's actually very important because it's not only about testing uh, the knowledge of the students. You really want to help them understand why something is right or wrong. So but I think this is actually the most important part of the quiz uh, to fill in this field and explain them why ABC is wrong in this case and, uh, and uh, CBA is correct. So I'm going to save my quiz um, and here it is. Yeah, everything looks good. Then um, I want to make my escape room. So first I'm going to put the quiz on the wall. No, first I'm going to add my price. Yeah? So this, the space where we want the student um, to go to if they have it correct. So I'm going to add my space again and I'm going to add a location. And I'm choosing, we have something with fireworks, which here it is. So this is like the firework balcony. And now I'm going to do something. I'm going to lock this room. And this is very important because if I lock this room, it means students cannot go there by themselves. They cannot use the navigator or, or a link to go there. It's very important because this is actually, you need to earn access to this space and you should not be able to go there uh, just like that. So that's why I lock it. Go to save my changes. And then I really need to hurry to get everything done in time. Um, and I see some questions also, which I will answer later. So I'm going to back, going to go back to my uh, demo space. Now I need to go back to the science lab. As you, yeah, you saw in the navigator already quickly, if you looked. You saw the fireworks um, balcony there, uh, but you can also, I show it now, you, you also see it's locked. So I cannot click, nothing happens. So I know it's there, but I cannot go there. Now, now I'm going to find my quiz. Here it is, animal quiz. Here we go. Uh, I'm not going, to, yeah, I'm going to use the question mark, okay. Okay, so here's the quiz. Um, it's in the room, but now we need to make sure that students can actually um, visit the fireworks balcony if they answer correctly. So if I click on show quiz, I'll see this small, let's say settings button over here. And that's only for me, of course. Students won't see this, it's only for me. And here I can configure the quiz. So I can say, yeah, the students need to have everything correct or only 50% or 80%. Uh, I can say congratulations, you passed. And you can say, if you got it correct, you can go to the firework balcony. Um, do they get uh, like a, a free pass if they tried it too much? Uh, that's something you can say. So after two or three or five, uh, you say, okay, never mind. You tried it two or three times, you can go, or they should never get a free pass that you sh should always answer correctly. Okay. This is now um, done, so I can open and close the quiz. And if I now uh, click this answer, I'm not correct, but if I choose the right one, you see the answers are all, always scrambled. Then I've um, answered the quiz, quiz correctly and I can go to the firewall balcony. Here we go. So this was basically how you set up a quiz. Um, let me see the questions because I see a few. Uh, first of all, is it possible to upload local video into the space? Um, we uh, You can use video, but it needs to be hosted somewhere. Um, and what we usually recommend is to uh, have, for example, a Vimeo account or maybe YouTube account, um, uh, especially a paid one, to be honest, because then you, are, you have reliable streaming uh, quality. Uh, you can link YouTube um, directly into the space, but the problem is that YouTube will usually um, yeah, block that or, or, or pause that, or it's very unreliable basically because they don't like it. They either want, to use, they want you to use the embed functionality or to view it on YouTube. So all these um, virtual worlds where, they, where you can actually uh, use the free YouTube links uh, doesn't, aren't really reliable. 
So, but for our spaces, we have a Vimeo account. I think it's only nine euros a month or something. Uh, or if you if you have a infrastructure on your school or on your university where you can place the, the video, that's also fine. And you can just place the video link and it will show in the space. Uh, maybe I can quickly show you how it looks. So you have uh, an ID. Um, the video I used earlier. That was this one. So, copy it. So here's the video. I place the link. And then it will generate uh, the video. By the way, um, you can also include, uh, yeah, here it is. But as you can see it, it's not playing very consistent. So uh, we do not recommend it, to be honest. Um, can you spawn objects in the same place reliably? It seems the drag and drop method is not a precise method and requires some messy adjustment each time you bring a new object into the space. Um, yes, that's true. Um, that's because basically this, this drag and drop functionality for this, um, uh, as I showed you today, is more or less um, used for decorating spaces. Eh? So there's a space already and you're just adding content. Um, if you really want to build a virtual space yourself, um, it's better to, to use the editor. And I was planning to show you, but I'm, I'm happy I didn't do it because I'm already over time. But there's also a spoke designer and this is basically a 3D design tool where you can uh, yeah, have much more controls about how to position things. But that will be a topic for another webinar uh, because it's too much for now. And, um, but then you basically build up your 3D space uh, yourself and you can add all kinds of objects. Um, I assume you can all add any object. Yeah, own objects, furniture, fire safety. Yeah, everything, it needs to be in the GLB file format, but if you have, um, any 3D model, usually it can be converted either via our website or if you have a tool like Blender. So yes, you can upload your objects. Um, also in this editor, but also as a, as a, let's say as a teacher, hey, if you click on place and model, there's a button here where you can upload a file to a specific 3D file. Um, I think the last question, this looks like it's Mozilla Hubs. That's correct. Um, it's built on Mozilla Hubs. So what we added is this backend um, because um, that's what we were missing. So like, let's say controlled access to the spaces. And that's the next thing I will do and I will show. Um, a management system CMS where you can easily have all your spaces. You can copy them, including the contents or including the videos, including the models that are in there. Um, you can share them with other people in your organization, um, which then can view them and copy them if they want. Um, yeah, so that's actually why we try to make it suitable for an organization. Um, and because with, let's say, the open Mozilla hubs, you always have links that are available for everybody. Uh, but that's not the case with, uh, with Vimeo because um, the rooms that you've seen can only be accessed if I actually schedule a class. Let's do that now. So I'm going to schedule a class, webinar class, and then you can all try it out. Selecting the space. Um, ah, here it is. Uh, let's say I open it a bit earlier. Um, yeah, and then uh, you can protect it with the pin code. So if I now, uh, so basically what I'm doing now is I'm planning a class in this space for people to join um, between uh, 8.30 and 9.30. I'm saving my changes. And now it's in my schedule. And just like with Microsoft Teams or any other meeting tool you're, you're used to, you have an invite code. And that's uh, this, this code. So there's a URL and a pin code. And that's basically what you can share with your students. So I'm going to do that right now with you. And then everybody can join into the space and, uh, and visit them. Yeah, so that's what we built on the back end. Um, the whole, um, yeah, the whole control, uh, let's say, features. There's a profile page also where you can publish your spaces. So you can make, you can show what kind of um, yeah, education you're making and, and spread it out to the world. There's also a beta version of a ticketing system here, so people can 
actually buy tickets from you and then I can get access for a day. Um, yeah, and in, in the space, we added this content library. We added, um, we changed the user interface because um, um, for example, there are also options in every room where you can decide what students can do. So we added options to block the chatting functionality, for example, or to uh, yeah, block other people. It's a bit too far, but yeah, we made it more suitable for education. That's basically what we did. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're okay and you don't feel like visiting the space, then uh, thank you for, uh, for joining and for watching. Uh, we'll have a seminar every month. So this was the second one, actually. Um, first one on YouTube. Um, I think we could do it a bit better, to be honest, but uh, this was a good learning. And yeah, next time we have a very interesting guest. Uh, it's Craig Freilich. He's actually designing uh, virtual spaces for a long time uh, or class in virtual reality. So he's also um, uh, coming to join us. Um, he's going to tell us a bit about his experience and how he builds spaces uh, uh, and how he uses virtual reality in his courses. I'm going to uh, close the live stream because now we have two different uh, uh, systems where we can communicate. So again, thank you very much. And um, yeah, if you want to uh, ask a question, just uh, send an email to hello at imedu.io. And uh, this uh, video will also be shown uh, uh, on, the, on our channel on YouTube and in the, uh, in the community. Thanks and see you next time.